All right, yeah, good. What's going on, everyone? This is Sheets, and I'm here with a very, very special guest. We have Vince here, otherwise known as uh, hmm, uh, Gelati, LOL. Yeah, um, that's right. You got it. Yep, very, very good. Uh, uh, the successes are coming one at a time. First, we were able to overcome the no internet. Now I'm almost getting his name right. I mean, these are <laughs> listen. When you get to be my age, it's like really small victories, like kind of kind of across the board. You take um, what you can get, right? Yeah. So for those of you that that again have been following me forever, you know, I always love to have people on that have an area of expertise that I don't, and, and not that so much that I don't that that almost nobody does. And I, I belittle sometimes talking about LOL as kind of like a quote unquote fringe sport, you know, but the fact is like for daily fantasy sports, I mean, just because of the way the prize pools are, it's just not as, as lucrative and it's not as big, big of a prize pool. So that's the kind of bucket it kind of falls into. And as you guys probably remember, hopefully you don't remember, but um, when COVID first happened and all the sports just kind of disappeared, people had nothing to degen, okay? And so people that had never heard of League of Legends just said, what's this thing? I don't care. I'm going to bet on it, you know? Um, and what's, what's, what's neat about it is from a, from, from a DFS player's perspective, it really doesn't matter too much what you're betting on. You know, it's just kind of, you know, everything's a data point on a spreadsheet. Everything's about lineup construction. Everything is about factoring in ownership and... You know, so I kind of got into League of Legends the same way that everybody else that didn't know anything about League of Legends at that point got into it. Uh, just kind of just fired stuff, try to use the Sims and use optimizers to kind of figure it all out and just kind of learn the same way I did every other sport. And so along the way, I you know found different people who knew a little bit about League of Legends and a couple of them came on my show, talked about it, whatever, because I knew nothing. OK, I mean, I still when I'm watching the game, I, mean, I know who's winning and I know what I'm rooting for. But I can't, I can't, you know, when I'm trying to follow what the casters are saying, I don't know what the hell they're freaking talking about, but I know exactly what I'm rooting <laughs> for. Right? And, 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 I, and so then I had one guy come on, I had another guy do stuff. And then I had um, this other guy, uh, DFS Free Rolls, came on. And he kept on mentioning your name. And I kind of like forgot about it, whatever. And so I actually reached out and reached out. I saw him on Twitter and I saw that he had a Patreon. And I am, I'm the person who literally subscribes to everything. The idea being <laughs> that if I can learn a little something, okay, from somebody, it's going to be well worth it. And it already came with a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of a recommendation. So, you know, I, I, I joined this Patreon just for full disclosure. I have no relationship with him at all. I'm getting nothing from this. I'm not asking for anything. I'm literally a paid subscriber to his Patreon, like every one of you else should be. Okay. Um, and I just saw, I found his analysis extremely in-depth. He seemed to know like much more than everybody else about what he was talking about. And, and because of, uh, you know, the way distribution, the results distribution works, he happened to win every time, like the first step, first couple of times I, I, I was watching it, whatever. Um, and so I figured I would have him on and talk about the stuff that I always talk about with these guys, you know, like where, where he came from, how he learned about League of Legends, what his history was. I didn't do as much homework as maybe I should, but... Uh, Hopefully we'll, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll have some fun with it. So tell me, first of all, like, who are, like, who are you? Like, you know what I mean? Like, where did you come from? How did you look? Why are you betting League of Legends? Are you the type <laughs> that played before? Or you know what I mean? Like, where, 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 what's your history? All right. So uh, I've been a games player my whole life. All sorts of stuff. Video games, card games, poker. Um, I've, I've just always been into this kind of thing. And um you know, the at the time, this was like right after maybe like senior year of college. Uh, so I guess around like 2010, 11, right when League came out, a friend of mine said, hey, you should check this game out. I said, OK, yeah, sure, whatever. And into it, started playing it, you know, avidly. It was like it had me hooked right from the get go. And usually when I find something I like, I tend to stick to just that for a while. Well, I got really, really good eventually. It took, it took me a long time. But um, I got pretty good at it, and I found out that uh, you know, there was a prof It's not even found out. Like I was there at the beginning of the professional scene. Like it was pretty much like right in in tandem with um when the game started. Uh, something a lot of people don't know about League of Legends is the Riot Games, the people that designed it. They kind of got the idea from a different game. The original game was uh Dota, uh, Defense of the Ancients. It was um. 
it was <laughs> weirdly enough a a custom map like a user made map on with the Warcraft three engine, which is like an old game, uh, old Blizzard game, uh, all time great. But they took that idea and built it in you know their stuff that they didn't like about it and stuff that they did, and they kind of made their own version of it. And right from the get go, they they had this idea that they wanted this to be a competitive title, like not just like popular. They wanted it to be an esport. They wanted it to be competitive. Uh, at the time, they had kind of taken a lot of um, inspiration from like StarCraft and and WarCraft three competitive scenes and stuff. So like esports has been around for a long time. It just hasn't been as popular until the last you know like five to ten years. Um, so I got really into League, was uh, playing it actively. I actually after a couple of years, I got pretty good at it and started like coaching. And back then, it was not as developed a scene as it was, but I was I was coaching, you know, what you would call the equivalent of like triple A ball or double A ball, like a minor league that was like right below the um, the majors. And I did some individual coaching as well, and uh, you know, I got myself to the top, you know, half percent on the on the the ladder, like the gameplay ladder on the actual game. And I got pretty good, and I got really good at analyzing things and and you know teaching. That was my background before doing all of this was, you know, I, I had a teaching degree. So I kind of like was splitting the difference there. And uh, what ended up happening is I a lot of people just ended up liking my opinions, on not even liking my opinions, just curious about my opinions on things. And eventually I got tired of repeating the same thing over and over to everybody. So I started a blog and then I started a different project and eventually, you know, uh, the gambling kind of comes into this like around uh, right around when DraftKings first started having contests, this is what, like seven or eight years ago, I guess now it was a long time ago. And, um, like in the very infancy of that, like DFS was still pretty young at that point. And I had played a little from being a traditional sports fan, um, football mostly. And, you know, I was, I was a pure casual, but I'd always been interested in betting. I've been doing that for a long time, like actual handicapping, not as much like just gambling for fun. Right. Yep. And I kind of realized, like, so I saw DraftKings putting contest up for the, the stuff, and I was like, hey, wait a minute. Like, I know this. Like, I know this at a very high level relative to, like, an average person. <laughs> and I was like, okay, there's something here. And, like, I, like I'm not by any means, like, this at the time especially, I was not some stud DFS player. I did not know a whole lot of the game theory. Some ideas, but... um. I saw them posting it. And I was like, if 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 they have DFS contests, they're they're getting these lines somewhere. You can bet on this stuff. And sure enough, you could. And that's how I got into it. And then it morphed from like coaching stuff and just like my analysis of how I thought a patch would go into, oh, I just should use this to bet on this. Like I have knowledge and there's no way in hell that these markets are efficient. There's so just that's, no so way. That's, that's, <laughs> that's really interesting. Okay, I'm going to unpack this in, in the order that, yeah. that, you, that you started. So first of all, one one key buzzword that you kind of threw in there, okay, uh, uh, was was StarCraft, and I only mention that because again, I never played any of these games. But back when I was, I don't know if you remember, I don't know if you played poker when I when I was into poker, but but uh, I played early two thousands, yeah, but yeah, back in the day during the boom, yeah. and I was and I was twenty tabling and thirty tabling, sit and goes all the time, and a guy I was battling with all the time was a guy named Elky who at the time yeah. was one of the legends, I guess, of StarCraft or something like that. So, yeah. so back then, all these guys were StarCraft guys. There's another guy, a bunch of StarCraft guys that got into poker or whatever it is. And it's like it's the same thing. You're, you're, you're clicking, clicking buttons, you're clicking whatever, you know? Um, and so and so that's that's one thing that's kind of cool. The other thing is that, that, that hit me is that you actually saw DFS before the betting. You know, so so you saw the DFS streets kind of before the betting. And it's so funny because you said that, well, they have to be getting these lines from somewhere. You have to be able to bet on them. But what else? Yeah. People don't even realize that that's where it comes from. You know, what I was going to say is that, you know, that the most salaries to some degree come from from betting lines. And that's actually one, yeah. of, the, one of the weird overarching presumptions of all DFS is all projections usually presume that the betting lines are efficient in some way, yeah, you know, close enough. Yeah. Right. And that's why the, that's where projections come from. But you started with, with the fact that here's a DFS. Well, there's gotta be also kind of like, like ways to bet on this stuff. Um, yeah. What's, what's wild too is like, so I, I had, you know, I had some experience just offshore with football and, and just, just casually. Right. And 
like I kind of took an interest in like getting good at that and figuring out like how do people that actually win do this? Like if just out of curiosity more than anything, it's not like I was, you know, betting a ton of money or anything like that at the time. But uh, like it's funny, like I just happened to never see it on like a five dimes menu or like any anything yeah. like that, like any of these other places. And um, like it kind of happened at the same time where I was like, oh, wait, this has to be there. And then I seen it on a lot of the offshore books. It's like, OK, well, it turns out there is something for this. Let, let me get back. We'll get back to the gambling in a second. So so mm-hmm. you, you are it's what's awesome is that you played you're considered an expert player. Expert is obviously everything's relative, but. Like yeah. in all sports, you're, you're, you're light years better than a lot of people and a lot of people are light years better than you, but less people are light years better than you than you're light years better. And yeah. then you got into the coaching part. So here, I'm going to come right out and ask this because I always wondered this when I was actually watching League of Legends. I've never actually spoken to someone who, who coached and actually played it. And this is a question I, I asked for all sports. This is kind of off the path, but because I was thinking about this. Yeah. As, as the, the NBA turned in, for take basketball, for example, NBA turned into a, to a game of pure analytics about 15, 20 years ago when they kind of figured out that, you know, you shouldn't be taking bad twos, you should be taking nothing but threes and layups and everything's yep. kind of changed. You know, baseball, maybe a little bit before that became went with Moneyball and Bill James also turned into a whole analytic thing. And even in the NFL, you know, every, every, so listen, once progress happens, NFL has yeah. turned into a whole thing, you know, like with, with, with charting fourth down stuff and all this stuff. So my, my question is, and I asked this of, people, of like soccer owners, because even soccer teams are now starting to be take a more analytical approach to soccer, right? To what degree does does League of Legends like do that? In other words, is, is League of Legends at, at the highest level at that point where they're going to look at kind of like weird, anal- weird like, like, like analytics to kind of drive their gameplay as opposed to Hey, uh, Jackie Love, just go do your thing and just kill people, you know? Yeah, so it's it's a little column A, a little column B. A couple of the team, uh, not a couple of teams, a lot of the teams now have, like, data scientists. Now, I don't personally know any of the actual data scientists. I follow a couple of them on Twitter, and they occasionally release stuff. For the most part, it's behind closed doors, right? It's all private. Um, I do know that they are looking into that kind of stuff. And a lot of the people that have done, like, the, again, the guys I follow and stuff that have done... Um, pretty cool work and interest to have interesting ideas about things. I'm I'm almost positive it actually happens, but it's almost all behind closed doors and they don't want to like talk about it with other people. I don't know if that's because they're under contract or what, but I don't now here's the thing at the same time, there's a lot of stuff and there's a lot of people in the, you know, analyst community for this game that would think that just the way you're looking at it is the way we look at, you know, old school football coaches now where it's like, there's no way that they're thinking analytically about this. They're just doing what's comfortable. Right. right. So it's kind of a weird and a lot of these teams, everything's a secret. They keep everything behind closed doors. Is that right? so like, yeah, like it's it's they'll talk about some stuff. They'll talk about, you know, the drama and all this stuff or this player. We had a good practice session here. Like it, it's all but it's all like coach speak like you see in regular sports. How much and, how much how, how much money do these teams even make? Like, like I have to ask, like at the top, huh. the guys I bet on, for example, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like in LPL or whatever, how much do these guys make a year? Like or, or the or, players? Yeah. So the players, it what's well, interesting now because there's like a, a very loose salary cap in place for the LPL specifically oh, and the okay. LC the LC cap, that's actually pretty new, like last year. Cause they basically found out like there was a couple teams that were just overspending and buying all the stars. And um they tried to create like a tier it's a weird tiered salary cap that I think is a terrible idea, but that's a different conversation. Where they have like a certain like once you reach a certain level, like if you win a world championship, you're in you're an S tier, like you're a tier one player. And a team can only have one of those players on on roster. And it's like, but the 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 way the league does everything with that, it's super nebulous, and nobody knows whatever it is. And it's a third party deciding who goes in what tier. So it's kind of BS. But that's a different thing. In terms of actual money, um, I mean, there are players that have seven figure salaries. Really? Yeah. Like there, there's not many of them. Most most of them are making like you know in in the LPL on the LCK. A lot of the players are making I don't know, six, like six figures, low to mid six figures, and then and what, and what, what about those those MSI guys that I yell at? I mean, yeah, like pretty much, pretty much anybody, uh, anybody that was at MSI. So MSI is like an international tournament. Uh, for for those that don't know, like league is set up kind of like soccer, in that you have a lot of dom- you have all these domestic leagues all around the world, and then you know some of those domestic leagues happen to be just better than others. They have higher quality. They have a better product. The best players play there. Uh, 
like in in League of Legends, Korea and China are the the two like main leagues. They would be like your you know with the Premiership and you know what Bundesliga, I guess whatever whatever the top two soccer leagues are. Um, and then a couple times a year we have international tournaments, kind of World Cup style, where they it'll be like either a big tournament with a group stage and everything, or it'll be like invite only, like MSI is. M- MSI they invite the top two teams from each region basically. So, or the top two teams from the, the bigger regions, and then a couple of the smaller ones as well. And 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 the teams, like when they when the, when they win. I mean, I'm trying to think of the incentives here. Like the players make money for salary. Like if a team wins, like the split, does like the owners make like like a lot of money? I mean, like how much? Yeah. Money? So there's there's prize money. There's actually not as much prize money as you think. A lot of the a lot of the um the the money that is made from this stuff is just like media presence stream. So a lot of the players have like when they get contracts with their team, they're like, they have obligations. Like they have to stream a certain amount of hours for the team they have to do. Right. And they collect revenue from that. The fact of the matter is a lot of esports organizations are just not profitable. Like they're just not, it's just like a play thing for people that are well off or, or organizations that just want like a loss leader, like something to advertise with. And there are, there are a couple that are profitable cloud nine, uh, G2 in Europe, uh, fanatic in Europe. Uh, there, there are organizations that do well. But so, yeah, so so the, the last question I had about before we get into the gambling part again, this is because stuff was on my mind is is bet, back to the analytics for just a second. When I see at the beginning of every any League of Legends match, they have the draft, okay, mm-hmm. and you see like the coach kind of like walking up and down the thing or whatever it is and, and, and saying, Okay, he picked this, I picked this, he picked this, I picked this. In my head, you know, I, I manage a hedge fund, I just in my head, all of those decisions should in my mind be automated in other words like 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 if 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 him based on his stats is going to pick that then him based on his stats should pick this you know is it is it at that point or and and the guy walking around is really is not really making any decision they already know what they're doing or 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 is it not up to that point so this is uh this is like a really hotly contested topic, like in the scene. Hey, look what I did. Like, Not bad, right? Yeah, yeah. So there's yeah, pretty good. That's a good <laughs> read. Um, generally, so there's basically the two schools of thought, which is the the money ball school of thought, which is like purely numbers, like purely quantitative, be like, okay, this champion has X win rate against this thing. And then there's the other one, which is kind of like vibes and feel and and you know comfort level based. I like the the art versus science is the I the whole thing here, right? I th- I personally am somewhere in the middle. I think it could be more. Uh, what you should have is like you do in like an NFL team has, where you should have a data scientist or somebody that's like spitting the numbers at you, being like, you know, this this has a plus matchup here to the to the tune of you know a twelve percent edge on whatever, right? You should have someone spitting that out, and then it should be the coach's ultimate decision to be like, yeah, but we you know don't have a ton of practice reps on that, so like I don't know how this is gonna go. Um, that's my personal thought because like ultimately you have to remember too a lot of these players they're you know kids <laughs> they're 18 to 24 like they are emo- like we're human right. they're emotional beings on stage and if if someone if you're going to put someone in a very uncomfortable situation then maybe that doesn't you know that's not beneficial at the same time i think there's there's a lot of coaches that are way too far in that spectrum where they they won't even factor it they won't even try anything different or outside the box they just they want to stay in their comfort zone and just like in real sports, like maybe it's so they don't get fired or maybe it's so the player doesn't get pissed at them, you know, like we, uh, silly things like that. Th- but that is an it's an interesting debate that's happening. Like there's a there's a couple analysts that are like, no, this is stupid. You should just use all this, all the high level solo queue data and look at matchups and be like, no, this, 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 you know, these two champions win at this rate together. You know, these two champions versus these two champions wins at this rate together, like that kind of thing. Um but there's, I mean, the other aspect of this is like there's also like a time limit. So like even if you did build some kind of model and had like a like a touchpad on stage or something, yeah. like I don't know, you know, how much there there would be some some way to parse that out and create something some useful data point for to give a coach. Like, yeah. give me the ten second breakdown of like what matters here. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about gambling the the betting part first. Um, you could take this in any order you want. Um, you you refer to. In, in your Patreon and your work that you you compare the lines or whatever with, with, with your model. Okay. So, yeah. so talk about that a little bit, what that means. And the other question, I guess it's an overarching question is, is based on your, in your opinion, right? What 
like how bad is everybody? You know, the lights like forget the DFS star part. Of it. How bad? What kind of edge is there to bet on? I would say esports, but let's focus on LOL. Like, uh, what yeah. edge is there? Given listen, you 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 know, you could talk about where you bet. You could talk about whatever you want. Like what kind of edge is there in in League of Legends? Um, because there are two schools of thought the way I look at it. One is that it's, there's not that much action, not that much money being put into it. So how could there be that big of an expertise? And yet the other part of me is like, well, if there are people that are just niche grinding this particular sport, they probably know what they're doing there. So it could go either way. And tell me about that and tell me like what, what that means by, by model. Are you like an actual, like, like run Sims or whatever? Tell, tell me about whatever you want as far as those two questions. Are. Yeah. So, it was back in the, I will say this it's got it's a lot better than it used to be like the market is anyway um that's part of why I had to like learn all this stuff like so I, I don't have it I don't have a data science background I don't have a math background I was I studied music in college <laughs> so I, I you know I've, I've picked up a lot of this like all by my own lessons basically like I've had to teach myself and I'm you know it's not like some complex um I don't have like some complex machine learning algo or anything like that like it's literally just me running really simple ideas in Excel or sheets, or I know a little bit of R and that's it. Like that's so let's get that out of the way first. Um, second, a lot of it is, um, yeah, it's, it's the whole idea of the efficient market hypothesis, right? Where it's like, okay, it, it, theoretically the more liquid something is, the more accurate the price is right, right? Yep. now. Like I said, it's gotten a lot better because it used to be a lot more liquid. Like you couldn't get anything. Now, like there's a couple places offshore that will actually let you get a decent sized bet down. Um, and I don't think it's necessarily like free money or huge as like you have to work at it. Like I think there, I think there is just like, um, just like a lot of sports, like there is some kind of blend of art and science to this. Like personally, but I think for league specifically, it's a lot less quantified. Like there's parts of it that are quantifiable, but there's a lot of it that isn't right. Like in traditional sports, say like basketball, you can, you can figure out offensive efficiency and defensive efficiency and, you know, figure out some kind of idea for how you're going to set the pace of the game, how many possessions, how many shots are going to be taken. And you can, you know, get within a reasonable range of what is a reasonably expected outcome. And everyone's doing that. And, you know, it gets pr to be a pretty sharp number, right? Yep. In league, you know, like take for basketball, for instance, like, you know, you're not going to tell LeBron James that he can't use his right hand for the game. You know, like that's it's not like literally exactly like the correlation here. But like if you take a if you take a certain player off their comfort picks, um, if you take, uh, you know, the patches change all the time, like the, the environment of the game is changing. Like what if what if they told NBA players, oh, yeah, um, we're moving the three point line back six inches, you know, for the next six weeks. Right. Like that doesn't seem it's like, oh, I mean, it doesn't change. Most teams probably wouldn't change anything. And that's how a lot of league teams operate. Other teams don't. They would completely change up how they do based on, you know, shot efficiency from X location or whatever. Right. Um, I, I do think that there's like some blend of the both. And I, that's kind of like how I found my niche specifically. Like I'm not. I'm not some whiz kid numbers guy. Like I have very, very basic models that, you know, yeah. basically apply standard deviations for a lot of the economy and objective control statistics. And that's essentially what I'm doing. And uh, like, I'm sure there's other people out there that are actually, I know there's other people out there that are running uh, more complicated stuff than that. I mean, but you can, you keep a lot of these books are just pricing stuff with like basic ELO settings. And then kind of take what is, what is, what is that what does that mean for those who don't know what, what is basically elo settings so like so like an like an elo model like a, like a chess rating system um you're basically uh measuring qual like the wins based on the quality of the opponent you're facing yep. it's not looking necessarily at the context of the of the actual matches and the actual data within the matches it's just looking at you know this opponent is great is rated here and you are rated here and you earn X points toward your rating if you defeat that person and you lose X points toward your rating if you lose to that person. With so three. like yeah, sorry. So if uh for example, like if you have a super highly rated team that loses to a low team, like a like a poorly rated team, they're gonna lose more points to a team that was closer in rating to them. And vice versa. So well, one thing is that is that he does um Vince does put on, I'm not gonna show up, but Vince does put on I think at least his Patreon, but other places his the actual like results of like of like of, like how he does and stuff like that. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, I, that's that's a whole. I mean, we could talk about that too if you want to. If you want to go into that, I have I have a going into a paid model was not something I I took lightly. I have a lot yeah. of philosophical ideological issues with. Yeah, um, yeah, no, no, absolutely. I'm, I'm just trying to get <laughs> but, a sense for again, like uh, you know, what kind of of, of edge there, there 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 could be. Um, uh, I mean, it's definitely because it's definitely a fun sweat. You know, for, and for those, yeah, for sure. Even if you've never played, if you've never sweated it before, as I mentioned, like even if even if you don't exactly know what's going on, one, th and we'll get into this another th maybe later. The, if you get like the right, the main uh, casters, they they get they are awesome. Yeah, I've never yeah. said <laughs> they're so good at like getting you engaged, even if they don't, you don't know what the hell they're freaking talking about. Like you you know exactly what 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 to root for, and you know exactly what's going on. Okay, those I will say that's that's something league has gotten right. Like so. Yeah. For someone like me, that's like a 0.01 percent viewer, that's watched yeah. thousands and thousands and yeah. thousands of hours of this stuff. Right. A lot of times, I'll, I'll be I'll be honest with you. A lot of times, I watch the stuff on mute. I like bet. Oh, I bet. Me. I bet. Because it's 100%. like it's it's like it's like when you're watching an NFL game. It's of course. Like, I know, like I know what this is. Like I don't need to have this explained. But one thing I think league has done right is they understand that in order to appeal to the masses, you're not appealing to me. Yeah. You got to appeal right. to you got to appeal to people like you that have never seen this. It's like, hey, like, draw me in. Like, give me something to talk about here. Let me, give me something to let, let, let tell a story. You, when, when when LCS, uh, not LCS, yeah, when Worlds came to New, uh, Madison Square Garden, it was two years ago. Okay, um, I went. Okay, it was part of my it was part of my goal. I was gonna listen, I'm gonna bet on all these freaking sports. I want to see all of them at least once. I went to like the golf. I went to golf. I went to U.S. Open. I did tennis, whatever. And they were, and I'm like, I'm going now. As you might imagine, couldn't find anybody to go with me. Okay, <laughs> right. So I went. I went. I went myself. Okay, and that place was a freaking zoo. Okay. Yeah. It was so crowded, and everybody was so hyped. Okay. Um. It was. It was. It was really a kind of. An, a, it was amazing to see. Um. You, they, and and I think that again, they the the casters or whatever, they, they they do bring it to the masses in a in a in a very fun way. You know. Yeah. Um, they've actually they've they've won awards for their broadcast. Like, well, I bet, like, and you know, it's funny. Yeah. And everybody kind of tries their hand at it. Like, sometimes I'm not able to find the, the the main feed, so I have to invent these other streams to find. You know, they're in Chinese or whatever. And I've come across all these different 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 idiots that are trying to that are trying <laughs> whatever, whatever it is. Um, now now one thing that they don't never show on because it's hard to 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 gauge to gauge is. During the game, like what, what, how your team is actually doing? In other words, like you see the kill score, you see the whatever. Like, what are your, what, are, what is the chances that you actually win the game? Every once in a while, if you get the right stream, you get like a little graph where would somebody would say like winning chances, but very rarely. And it brings me to this. The question. LPL stream does right. that, yeah. Yeah. So it brings me to this question as far as gambling goes, because this is what every other sport has become now. How much live betting is there? In, in League of Legends, if at all. So there there is there is live betting available. The it's not the limits aren't very high on it, but there is an edge to be had in that. Um I've done this is something I've wrestled with too. I've done a decent amount of like trying to do content for live betting stuff, but it's just it's really tough with my schedule. And then secondly, it's really uh, it's really, really tough to post something. And then people get that. And even that, like, 30 seconds later, it's gone, right? So, like, I, I almost find that there's not really a point for content for it. I will sometimes do live streams where I'm you know, talking positions over and being like, hey, you know, like, this might be a spot where, you know, I want to take some risk off the table or I want to, um, you know, I'm looking for this specific thing to happen at and any price better than this, then I can do that. It's a lot easier to do that with, like, a live stream, but it's also, like, you know, I can't always be sitting there all the time. And a lot of times I'm watching multiple matches at once. Okay. So I'm so. going to, I'm going to have to straight for a second to talk about something I, I really like talking about. And yeah, no problem. No, no, no. And, and it's, it's not you is no problem. Everybody else is going to say, Oh, Eric, get back to it. Right. But, but the, the, the thing about content, right? and, and this is, and I'm going to, I'm going to tell you what you can do. Okay. Like, so <laughs> I, have, I have an idea for you. Right? So for those of you that are watching me for the first time, okay. Going back to, in the day, you know, we, I was part of launching the first poker training set. Okay. And the content was in different forms. We gave videos of showing people how to play. Great. But the funnest part was always the live sweat where I would 20 table in the middle of the night 
And this is before Twitch even existed. OK, but we did a live stream with our own software. People would watch and see my whole cards. No delay. You know, if someone happened to be at my table, yeah. I was screwed. Whatever, who cares? I mean, back then, who cares? And it was so much fun because people would learn. And at the same time, they would have a sweat. OK, they would watch me and be rooted. And that was that was poker. And when I got in DFS, I, ne I never still have not been able to figure out how to make that work that the, the blend between teaching and the sweat, because yeah. I can show people how to build lineups and that I can even show them live me building them. But the sweat of like seeing how I'm doing, it's weird because what causes results is not me putting lineups in is watching the players kind of like play out, you know, like yeah. I could sit here and look at my lineups and live stream my lineups and have people kind of watch the games sort of, but I can't really watch the games. So I, I, try, I couldn't figure that out. And then I started thinking about sports betting. Like, how can you make content out of sports betting? And I, I was stumped. I didn't know quite how to do this, and I still don't. But the weirdest thing happened. I was brought to a um, – I was brought to a uh, – uh, it wasn't a Twitch stream. It was something called Kick. And Kick is kind yeah. of like cool, the cool kids version of Twitch, I guess. I never even heard of it, okay? But some guy apparently was doing some live stream and I was called there to settle some Twitter beef or whatever it is. And it was this guy named Elfie. Okay. And, and what he is, he's like kind of an accountant by trade, but at night he puts on his hoodie, does whatever. And he live streams his live R betting. Okay. He basically has 20 tables, so to speak, right. Of trying to like scalp 10 cents here and there. And he had like 300 freaking people watching him like do this. Okay. Just arbitraging. <laughs> right. Just just trying to looking for arbing. Okay. And he had the listen, he had the rap music playing in the background. And he had like, oh, oop, I can get two cents here. Bam. And everybody's like, yeah. whatever. It turns it into a whole thing. So it was kind of fun. I went in there and I, I used my own name sheets and I started to say, hey, what's going on? And like 10 people recognized me back from poker. And he said, This is actually Sheets you're here. And the guy Elfie's like, Who the hell is Sheets? And like, no, you don't know Sheets did this back. So he had me on the show like immediately. And we were just kind of awesome. talking about content. So, 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 so for someone like like you, like, and I, I try everything, right? Even like DFS, sometimes I would try to do like a live stream of like League of Legends lineups. Yeah. Like you get down to like the last game or something like that when you know exactly what to root for. You know, you put. You, yeah. But I don't know how to cast. You know, I don't know. It's like kind of like really funny. I'm like, like, okay, dude, go get him, get him, get him. Oh no, you know what it is. And and so like, if you wanted to do something like with live betting. Or whatever you actually know the game also yeah. i know listen i know i would pay to get in there and that people would love probably to, to 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 watch number one like you've come up with a uh, maybe live betting at the time oh we got we got to hop on this guy right now or something like that look what he did over there he let the guy uh let the guy kill him when he shouldn't have the the, the line is bad so the you could combine you know the, the, the knowledge of the game with knowledge of betting until maybe run into copyright problem yeah that's TV. that's the ultimate that's the <laughs> ultimate issue and I, right. so a lot of um first of all like the whole idea of like wagertainment oh, that, you know, i think oh, that's I like how that. that i never uh, heard that you ever, do, you, do you know uh you better you bet it's a really really big popular podcast for mm -hmm. like sports betting stuff um but they that's what they call it they call it wagertainment now it's like that's okay. like the that's a great way to term it like because it. like that's like it's it. a thing like it's a people one people are just into gambling People are into risk in general. Like there's an, especially in young people, there's an appetite for it now. Like there's never been right. You know, yeah. there's a whole, and there's a whole ideological discussion you could have about that, whether it's right or wrong. But the fact is, it is what it is, right? That's, right. you know, that, that's, that's what, you know, people want. Um, the, the problem with the league doing that and really any other sport is the copyright infringement right. aspect of it, where it's like, so there are people that get permissions to they do what's called co-streams like if the LPL now um they only have an English broadcast four days a week because they're you know they're trying to save money basically they're yeah so um the English broadcast is only four days a week the official English broadcast but all the casters have streams that they run and they just cast the games like from their house or from their apartment or wherever they're at but they have to get permission from Riot to do to stream the stream that they're watching so it's like, like it's kind of like that like, like playback tv is something now where or, uh, you like the manning cast like that kind of idea where where uh, like like they have their permission because you know it's an nfl player it's still an nfl product or whatever the whatever network is using it, it's still their product or whatever so uh it's it's that kind of idea but like you have to get permission from them 
and then you get less of the share of that. Also, league has a very, very negative – a lot of the sports do. They're starting to come around a little bit, but a lot of these leagues have very negative kind of like associations with gambling. Like they don't want anything to do with it. Like a lot of the – like there's other esports, Counter-Strike and, and Dota and uh, other games – are like kind of okay like they're in bed with with gambling in general they even advertise it and everything league riot and um uh was it rocket league like they want nothing to do with it like they have the, if you watch their broadcast they never mention it they want nothing to do with it maybe that'll change someday so like imagining like getting co-streaming rights for something like this would be basically impossible now I, i'll do streams once in a while where it's just yeah. literally me like on this yeah. screen that yeah. i'm using right now well, and what I'm you just... do is you well you, when you share the screen you share like in my and I'll opinion, highlight like basically the scoreboard at the top, well, and then well, like well, in, whatever in my, my bets in, are at the time, and that's that. That's like well, that's what in, I do. In, in my world, what you would have is you'd have a DFS the the, the DraftKings lineup uh, board and the, the lobby yeah. up on on their main screen. But the problem is, is that they don't, they just don't update everything in real. Oh, time. For, oh, oh, that's another, that, that's another beef. The whole, the whole. Um, there's a really goofy Twitter follow the the DK drunk intern. Ooh, it's kind of like an. In- there's so like there's this um there's a the kind of an inside joke in the esports community for for DFS where it's like you know DK you know will update their they'll update the scores tomorrow at some point who knows like who right, knows right. the intern the interns are still asleep or whatever. Well, that's well, like, well, I'll tell you the, I'll, I'll tell you what's really funny is that's that's for me that doesn't know the game back you know as well as you do for me that's kind of like part of the sweat like like after all the games are over I'm like okay so so who that's won fun. you know like I, I scroll that's down fun. the lineups like who's got four four players left and I'm adding up the the, the GN the GNP bonuses like in my head you know as yeah meanwhile go, meanwhile you have like I, I'm in a I'm in a couple of just discords with with people that play this and meanwhile you have people there like they've come up with their own ways to add it like they they know the points calculations and they're like oh, adding really? it as they go and everything I know um. You said you had Brad on before, right? Yeah, yeah. I know Brad does that. Like, yeah. I, know, I know for a yeah. fact he does that. Yeah. I know there's a few other ones that do. I, but I bet, I bet, I can imagine that you, like, if you're watching it, if you really were in a DFS, like, more than you, you are, you'd be watching and you, you'd you see, like, some top top lane would just have, like, a, a big game. Right? Okay, he's optimal. I don't, you know what I mean? Like, I don't, yeah. I don't care what else happens. You know, Dudu is optimal or whoever. Durant yeah. is optimal or so, yeah. somebody like that is optimal. Just by – you look at one fight, you're like, okay, that's going to be into this lane. Yeah, you know, whatever it, yeah. it is. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm not uh, you know, I'm, I'm not smart enough to, you know, to, to be so jaded. I'm, I still think I have a chance. <laughs> like, I'm like, I guess we, we go through you, the later you one. You know what, though? Like, there, as funny as it is, like, there's a part of it that's ignorance is bliss about that. Like, it makes yeah. it more fun, right? Like, it definitely yeah. makes it more fun. Like, you're not you're not sitting there sweating like, oh, my entire Tyree kill just popped off. I don't have enough Tyree kill. I'm just right. On, right, like, right. Like I'm, I'm totally that's right. close. Like that's, that's right. Um, so, so let's let me let's talk about DFS for a minute. So, so do you play a lot of DFS still, or not really? So I you so that's how I got into it. First of all, it was a lot a lot softer back then. Like people didn't even I, know. Imagine. Yeah, like the, the 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 field didn't know. Like like I I didn't know. Like I knew what correlation was. I did not know what it was like in terms of like DFS. But for me, like it was just intuition. I was like, oh well, if this team wins, they're all going to score well or whatever. Like, why would I mix rosters up? Like, it's just uh, I people, figured out the four three. three. Yeah, a, like three people get assists on every freaking kill, you know, or whatever. I was like, yeah. So I was I was like, this is like insanely correlated. I'm like this is. <laughs> so I was like, I, that it didn't take a rocket scientist to figure that out. So I did I did pretty well early, and actually that's it's that's how I met a lot of the the people I associate with and still deal with in the space. Um, you know, we had. I, I had a I had a podcast before I started my own like uh, a long time ago called the Gold Card Podcast and it was just a bunch of people I met playing DFS like just on Twitter and we started a podcast and had that going and then you know when COVID happened little story time here <laughs> when COVID happened this whole thing is story time that's all my shit is is story time. yeah yeah okay. you know what that story time's the best <laughs> screw the haters story time's the best <laughs> um so when COVID hit you know it it became the only game in town real quick. You know, so everyone's we had all these whales coming, you know, coming to the people that did league DFS and be like, hey, what do you do here? Like, how would like, how does this work? Like, what's going on? You know, we took that as an opportunity. Myself and a couple of colleagues took that as an opportunity to start, you know, a website. We did the esports department and we that had a about a two year run before, you know, we just we shuttered. Basically, people had people had other projects they wanted to pursue, um, you know, all this other stuff. And um 
I remember at the time because like I used to do everything for free. I had a blog, I had a, just a free blog, and that was it. And I would put my thoughts on there, and it was mostly just for me, like justifying stuff to me, and you know having a track record for myself to to you know follow my trades essentially. And uh, when that happened, we kind of picked up a lot of steam with this podcast, and then uh, we started the esports department. The esports department, we we're going to do a paid product because we were going to have a, a um, projections, and we had to have somebody to do that input for all that. And, you know, so it was going to be a paid product. And for me, like, that was a big step because, like, I, I just have an issue with, like, the whole tout industry. And, like, paying for picks is just something I I, I can't stand, which is, like, I, I mean, not to – I'm going to plug the Patreon here, but, like, my Patreon, I keep it, like, bare minimum cost to basically pay my help. Like, I have a couple people that help me just organize my data in a way. So, like, it just takes, you know, time off – like, takes hours out of, like, that I don't have to spend on it. So it doesn't get get me too burned out. It's so like I basically try to do like my Patreon is basically paying costs to pay for help, and that's it. Do you do and you still do do you still do uh, DFS projections? I don't. Um, I again like it was just a time time cost benefit analysis. Like there's people there's people in the business that are better at it than me for for um, for DFS purposes and that had tools to do all that. So I kind of basically what ended up happening was like after all of that after we shuttered i was doing everything myself and it got to just be a little bit too much for me and i was like i was i was getting burnt out is what really happened so i was like you know i'm gonna pick the thing that i'm good at i'm gonna focus on the thing that i'm good at and i'm just gonna do that and i'll let everybody else do the dfs stuff so i still play i used to play a lot uh i used to, you know i used to be like max entering and all that kind of stuff i'm not anymore it's been you know, a couple of years now since I've done that, I still play DFS like for fun mostly. Like I know what to do, but I admit that like I'm not beating the field consistently. Because oh, you know what, you know what it fun. is now. So what what happens is what happened is okay. So with with, with Sabersim and 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 feels a lot Eisen, sharper than it used to be. Yeah. That's for certain. Well, like, well, no question. Well, well, I mean, like you know, you 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 have these these lineup builders which are which gives you good lineups to start off with and then you now you have contest simulators that that yeah that predict what the field is going to do and then figure like out predict what, ownership very yeah what kind of leverage that, yeah. you're going to get and that that what, what's happened is that you know that because the prize pools have gotten a little bigger they've extended the amount of entries that people can have so so it becomes very very difficult to 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 win by yourself okay to to, yeah. to win with a unique lineup and so what ends up happening is that it becomes sort of a competition within yourself, like how little you can you can enter and still hit the, and still kind of hit the optimal without overduping yourself. You know, it really becomes That's, like a it becomes like a dupe a dupe avoidance festival. You know what I mean? It's like, almost, I was gonna say it's almost like like you're kind of trying to determine like how much risk you want to put on. Yeah, in a it's, weird it's, way, like like it, it's it's very it's very it's very odd like that. And even somebody somebody mentioned to me like they're using again like I'm. I'm yeah. way, way out of the scene for that. Like, I I play it for fun. I know kind of, like, I know about contest sims, and I know, like, what people are doing vaguely, but I'm not super dialed in. But I had so, somebody was explaining to me that they use, um what is it, like, uh, they're trying to figure out, like, yeah, like, the optimal amount of lineups enter on a given slate based on where they project the ownership to be. Yeah, that's hard. Where it's uh, like. And that's hard. Um, and, yeah. And, but then what you'll still get, though, is is you'll get, You'll still get a whole bunch of people because they can max enter. They'll 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 torch like maybe twenty percent of their bankroll every day on game stats, um, and it just doesn't it just doesn't work often enough. Like every Everybody, everybody's every, trying to be Bellman. Yeah. <laughs> well, you 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 said his name, not me. Um. Uh. But but there are people that do it, and 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 just because. The ability to, to enter so many lineups, people just start with, you know what? I'll put people think the answer that. is every iteration when yeah. that's definitely not the answer. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. And I've seen you know too many times. I even hit the optimal and make like a few dollars. You know, yeah. That, that means that means you're you're probably, I mean, you're probably doing it wrong. So it's interesting. Like it's interesting that like that's kind of like the 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 DFS meta game has developed it within itself to oh, a point it's, where it's, it's like it's ridiculous. It's kind of cool. It's kind of cool. Like if you yeah. if you think about it, that's really cool. Like that yeah. it's gotten to that point. Yeah. On the other hand, it's like this is very very difficult now. Like it's just yeah. an extra extra two steps of work you basically have. So to do so everything. here's another thing uh, I want to talk about: LPL versus LCK. And to me, this whole th that that whole thing is is a really big deal for me based on everything else I do for a living. 
Okay, like um, like here here's my my thought. So I'm managing a stock portfolio. It's pretty easy for me to figure out what a good company is. Just because something you know is a good company doesn't necessarily make it a good stock. Okay, That's yeah, a question. absolutely. Okay. So also. Just because I'm looking at my board up here with my stocks up. So ju just because something's a good stock doesn't mean that you want to, you know, doesn't mean that it's a good stock today, for example. Okay. Yeah, um, absolutely. Second of all, just because I can come up with, say, 20 good stocks doesn't mean I want to put all 20 of them together because I want them to work well with one another, with correlation and things like that. And then even if I have 20 good stocks that are going to, you know, that, that I like a lot, maybe some of them are either too volatile or or not volatile enough given what yeah. i want to do like i want to build a growth portfolio i want to build i want you know 20 stocks that are, are they look the same but some of them are just more wild and have more upside and some of them are just a little more conservative yeah. and, and and that's and that to me is is this thing this lpl lck thing you know because yeah. so why don't you explain so so for those of you that that, that don't know like these are two leagues the same sport and yet one league just puts up amazingly high scores and the other the other league puts up incredibly low scores and what they do df and, and DraftKings, they combine these two leagues together uh and and have the the low scoring teams compete with the high scoring games for for fantasy points now again ownership and salary takes care of all that you know what i mean yeah yeah it because ends up it ends up kind of it ends up balancing whatever. it out anyway but, but first why why is it okay that one league plays the same game completely differently than the other one and so and, and so for me like as a dfs idiot i'm watching all these lpl games I'm like yes let's go 20 20 kills here eight and this other these lck guys i don't i don't have none of them in dfs and then when it comes time for the world's like the LPL guys get smoked, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so tell tell me the difference between these two leagues and how that even came to pass. So again, um, the weirdly enough to bring soccer back into it, I think the best comparison is actually soccer or maybe like um, uh, college conferences for like a given sport, especially like football. But soccer, I think, is the best comparison. The way Brazil, like the Brazilian league or South American leagues, tend to play soccer is a lot different than the way soccer is played in a lot of the European leagues. Like that's the best comp that I've come up with for it. Uh, over time, it's become a lot more homogenized. Like if you go, if you go back ten years ago, there was a much much starker difference between the leagues. Like back in the day, it was literally that was that was another one of the edges in DFS. It was back in the day, like the LPL was just thirty kills a game every single game, and the LCK might have ten. <laughs> like there were forty five minute games with ten kills in the LCK back in the day. So. You know, that's changed a lot, too. The game's become a lot more homogenized as as regions kind of borrow from each other and, you know, have concepts and stuff like that. But ultimately, it comes down to just, like, because these are domestic leagues, uh, much like divisions in a sport or, or domestic leagues in, like, soccer or something, it becomes about beating what the best teams in your league are doing, okay. not about what beating the best teams. So, like, it's, it's an isolated market, right? You know, what... What works if you're trading oil or something doesn't work the same as what's working for like Nvidia or, or something like that. So it's so, for, so it's yeah, not, it's not so exactly it's not like, the same thing, but so it's not like there's a, there is a good way to play. And, yeah, I mean there is the in my opinion there is a there's just a better like there's an optimal way to play, um, and usually like I think sometimes certain leagues get it right and other team other leagues don't. Sometimes I think what the best way to play is might be what the LEC is doing, but you know they don't have the same player quality. That what, what does that mean? What, what is, expand upon that. What do you mean? What is the LEC doing? So I mean, I'm just I'm just making up an example here. Yeah. Like um, there was a uh, 2019 is actually a good example. 2019 G2 made it all the way to the World Finals uh, against Fun Plus Phoenix. Uh, at that year, I thought G2 was the best team in the world. I thought they had such a unique interpretation of what was going on and and what was optimal in the game. They had it seemed like they just had the answers to everything before the games even started. They had all these creative solutions to drafts. They had all these interesting wrinkles and ideas that they could play with. And I ultimately, they they lost the final just because they were up against another bizarre team. And But like that doesn't mean like for the whole year that I didn't think that they were playing the best way. Now, that's also like totally subjective. Like I don't think, I mean, there's probably like some optimal like like um, objective way to figure out like what's optimal. And I think that's becoming, that's why a lot of stuff's become more homogenized. Like teams have figured out, okay, this is the best character on this patch. 
um, you know, this is the best duo on this patch for a bottom lane, for instance, or this mid jungle duo is really, really potent. Um, it's, it's, to me, it's like, it is a lot like soccer. Like there's, there's two different ways to play. You would think that like, just like in any kind of like market, like the most efficient, best way. I, I always call this concept, the blender in any kind of game or market or, or anything like that. The optimal will be f eventually figured out. Like that's what I call is like the the overall group think will eventually figure out the best way to do something, the most optimal way to do it. Like we're seeing in the NBA, right? It took a long time, but we have figured out finally we've solved basketball, so yeah. to speak. Yeah. Right. It took a while. I don't think league has been solved, but within patches or within years, it does get more solved. And like you'll usually notice, like toward the end of the season, everybody's kind of playing the same way. But early on in splits or early on in um like a patch, like a major patch change you see there's like some price discovery going on or, or some discovery of like, Oh, like what's actually good. We think this is what's good. This is what's been working for us in our practice. And then other teams kind of like borrow from each other. And eventually it all kind of homogenizes into one big, you know, thing that works. But I think, yeah, like I said, the, the, the best comp is probably like, you know, South American soccer versus European soccer, very same sport, same rules, very different looking result or like, you know, sec football versus, you know, Mountain West football or something like that. Well, I want I want to ask you about about the um, the Patreon and the League of Legends betting podcast and, and, and whatever else you have going on. And, and I, I, you know, you mentioned uh, earlier that I don't want to say bothered you. And I don't want to put words in your mouth, but the whole idea of of, of touting and and, um, yeah. and and having people pay for, for picks. I, I'm just going to I'm, I'm just going to say from someone who you know that ran a training site you know whatever and I, I do dfs content as well you know whatever and, and I, yeah yes i mean i do try to make it as educational as possible right like evergreen yeah. stuff that you can create a process and that's always been a, a challenge you know to to and whenever i do like a daily like who you know who looks good in the in the mlb streets tonight you know whatever feels a little not dirty but it feels a little useless in a way because yeah. it doesn't even matter who i like it all comes down to line of construction at the end of the day anyway I, so i try my best to also do a lot of advanced you know line of construction stuff but 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 i, I will say without giving too much away that that you you should have no i don't want to use the word shame in the wrong way you have nothing to apologize for <laughs> with with what you're doing you know what i mean like you're you're providing you're providing insightful analysis. You're, you're being honest about it. You're not hustling anybody. It's not like you're, you have two two uh, two Patreons and one of them is saying, you know, play EDG and the other one is saying, I'm not ever fading Milky Way. I'm playing Milky Way, you know, whatever. <laughs> you know, it's not like you're doing that. It's not like you're dishonest about, about the results either. You know, it's not like, oh, if I was just one kill away, I would have been up 13.2 units or something like that. Yeah. You know, you 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 it's 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 a it's a matter of quality not not um not the overall thing that you're doing you know so so yeah. i i i i would not feel the slightest bit in i say embarrassed it's not even the word i'm looking for you you, yeah. you 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 have every right honestly to charge for what you're putting out on these sites i'll just say that now again i don't know what you know how, how, if there's enough action for people to to, to pay more than what you're from what what you're what you're doing i don't know how much people that's a, that's another that's another thing to balance too but yeah right. it's i don't know how much people I, I, I try to i try to strike i try to strike a reasonable you yeah. know like i and, i don't want to charge out the teeth for this and like yeah. honestly part of part of i started the podcast for two reasons one uh, i wanted to just get more you know get out there more and have my you know have more of my content out there for free i used to do a podcast once a week with uh, okay. a crew of guys um, you know, obviously my life has changed quite a bit. Like I, I work nights and I do all this stuff. So it was just easier for me to do this on my own. I'm also a little bit of a control freak. So I like to have it done my way. The fact that you um, let people even touch your site is like, it's like a miracle, right? Like, yeah, like to me, to me, it's, to me, it's all gravy. Like right. that's like, I, I, I'm trying to put something out that's useful, something out that's, uh, that people, you know, uh, find entertaining that, you know, is this, I, I want to have some kind of use, something that's worth, you know. 12 bucks a month or whatever. I don't even know what I, I think it's 12 bucks a month. Right. So like, I think, I think, you know, getting the stuff for the podcast is out getting like the, the stuff I'm looking at, not just listening to me. You know, if some people just want to hear my opinion on something, you can listen to the podcast for that. It's free. I put it out free. It's not a problem. 
other people want to see like, oh, how did I arrive at that conclusion? Like, what's the information he's using? Like, what numbers is he looking at? Um, you know, maybe he has bigger picture thoughts. Maybe he's doing a league preview, stuff like that. Like, so I wanted to put some of it behind a paywall wall and kind of make it like some kind of hybrid thing where it's like, you know, I pay to keep I keep the lights on. But, you know, I'm I'm not ultimately doing this. Like, I'm not ultimately doing the media part of this for profit. Like, it, like it's just gravy to me. Like, anything is, any extra is good. Well, the betting well, stuff, I'm putting my, you know, I'm putting my money where my mouth is on everything. And I do pretty well. But the media part of it, it's, like, more just fun for me. Yeah, listen, anything. I mean, I promise you. I promise everybody that, I mean, he does a free free podcast and he does it every day. And and he charges like twelve dollars a month for the Patreon. I guarantee you he's making maybe three cents an hour. <laughs> At the yeah, most. it's not much. <laughs> it's, it's not doing. It's not much. He's not doing half of the money. I promise you. Um, Love of the game, right? Although, 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 I mean, there is kind of a little disclaimer on here that I will. You say I take tips. You know, if you if you if you if you do this all, which is which is totally respected, much respect. So just again, people always ask me about my process. So. You think that, oh, my God, what, what am I doing, you know, paying for the Patreon? I don't even bet on any of this stuff, okay? And he's not even – you don't even give, like, a, a, a DFS take on anything, right? Which is totally chilled by me because, again, you know, DFS is something that presumes that the lines are accurate to some degree, okay? Mm -hmm. and if you If I can find a take that flies in the face of what people think, I can – even I'm not betting it. I can apply that to DFS rather nicely, okay? Yeah. And, and and so what I do is I run through, uh, you know, my my normal process, and I go to his Patreon, which I pay for. I read his stuff, and I derive something from it. Like, let's say there's there's a favorite, like I think you mentioned the other day, you thought that like maybe BLG would not would not make their 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 kill total or something like that, or or the yeah. spread you didn't like them. So what I'll do with that information is I will limit the amount of four-man stats I would have for BLG, like, for example, you know, or or let's say he liked uh, he liked LGD a couple of days ago or whatever, and, like, we put, like, wrong team favor or something like that. Yeah. So, so yeah, I could just say, oh, I'm just going to tell him I'll bet LGD. He's betting LGD. Why not? But what I could also do is is there is is there I'll maybe put a few more four-man stats with LGD than I would have otherwise. Or, yeah, shift your ownership around. Or the other, or the opponent, I'll go ahead and maybe go, you know, go a little less. And and, and it kind of, kind of got to me the other day, like like Gen G, they were playing, and 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 uh, and and he was and he was saying that maybe you know KT might be might give them a little more of a fit because KT is because not as chalk. So you know what I'll do? So you know what? I don't have to play all the all the KT, but maybe I'll play a little less Gen G in 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 the uh, in format stats. Whether it works or not is not relevant. The, the point yeah. is that is that is that you can use these types of things to in to in, improve your process. And it's in a way, it's kind of cool that that your takes are not pointed right to DF to DFS, right? Yeah, it's not I like, try to keep it agnostic to everything. You know, you keep, or even agnostic, you're you're doing it from betting perspective, you know. Mm -hmm. And so that that's a very pure thing. I'm like, okay, he he thinks the market is a little off on that. So if the market is a little off, remember what I said is that most DFS projections presume the market's sufficient, then you could probably put a little bit of uh, you know, you could probably apply that to DFS a little bit manually. Um, yeah, that's that's the whole that's the whole principle. Like what, marrying these two things, that's that's ultimately what you're doing. Like in a major sport, for instance, like you're not going to find uh, an NFL side or total that's you know ten percent off market. In esports, you do occasionally. <laughs> like that's and uh, you know I again project like any anything like this modeling stuff out it's never going to be perfect but there's people that put think of like a major sport something that's got a super liquid mark nfl nba sides in total stuff like that like where the number is the number that's the price whatever like it's like it's pretty tough to beat those markets for a reason right something that's softer if there's someone that's originating numbers like i am if there's someone that's an originator for something and their their stuff is good and they have a long track record of showing success on it you can marry that to your DFS idea. Like th you can marry that to to your lineup construction in a way that's like, yeah, just shift your ownership a little bit. If you know, if if I if I'm betting a side, it probably means that I think it, it definitely means that I think the market's off. And if I don't think the market's off and it's just intuition, I say so. Yeah. Like, 
Now, there's a lot of like uh, this morning is a good example, right? Like I I I I double staked EDG. I thought the market was way off on it. Uh, it didn't end up working out. It's not always going to work out. That's fine. That's the game. That's 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 you know any kind of risk. You're not always going to win, right? But um, if I think the market's wrong, maybe you you know you bump your EDG ownership up, or you you yeah. you know you know move your move your sliding you know scale you know a different way. And I know, I know. I don't know if he, there's a handful of people that I know that like, that's all they do for, for they, they take my numbers as they use my numbers as like a source of truth, essentially for like a, yeah. for like a price. And they've had success with that. You know, it, you know, it comes and goes. Sometimes I have a bigger edge than I, than I don't. Sometimes the market's pretty good. I, I track a lot of that stuff too. I follow that as well, but ultimately like for like marrying betting stuff to DFS, I think what people need to understand in any sport, especially like smaller niche sports that are like, beatable markets more more beatable markets you can beat uh, anything but they're easier to beat markets if someone has alpha you know like you can apply that to to your lineup construction not just it doesn't mean you know just because i'm doing strictly betting content most i'll tell, i'll be honest with you probably 90 percent of the people that follow me are dfs players like they're not they're not they're not better some of them do both some of them are only betting but like most of the people that follow me and and consume my content are DFS players I, and they just use my opinions on it as as kind of you know how to shift ownership a little bit I did a uh, I did a podcast with uh, Golden Pants or GP something the other day um he does a lot also a lot of sports betting and, and talk about this a lot you know this idea of of marrying both DFS and sports betting together and and People that are betting, for example, like I use MMA as an example. There's a lot of MMA Twitter out there, a lot of betting. Mm -hmm. there, and there are people that think they have an edge. And and what I would say is that if you really think that a uh, an inside the distance line is that far off, I think that you probably do better leveraging that in a DFS streets than 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 trying to beat the forty cents. Um, yeah. Whatever. Um, and and. and uh, but there are very few people that that really do both, that do both the betting and the DFS. And and you think about it. Let's say that you you did do them both. If you had a whole syndicate that could want to dominate the League of Legends uh, idea, and, and you said, you know what? Based on my models, uh, EDG is going to have two more kills than, than than expected. So you can have like an algorithm run. Okay, the 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 kill uh, number on the in the betting streets is this. Are we better off betting just the over on the kills? Or we're having we're more exposure in the DFS. In DFS. I, yeah. I, there's an answer. I don't know what it is, you know, but, yeah, but there's, it's interesting. You mentioned that because um, this is going back a little bit, actually one of the colleagues I, I ran the esports department with, he used to do a lot of this where he would have, you know, he would have a slate and he would have a, a lineup that was looking good. And he would kind of use the betting market as like a hedge where it was like, um, Tell me about you know, it. Say, say, like going into the last, going into the last match or something. You know, he has a ton of exposure to some favorite, and it's like an easy head. Like it's it's an easy hedge question. Like you're not taking a ton of EV off the table. Like it ultimately, like I don't want to say that there's a whole. Actually, it's funny. This is a topical discussion on Twitter right now with Rufus and all those guys. They're talking about like the the um how how minus EV is it really to do any kind of hedging. I whatsoever I, I, like that's I, I a whole remind that a half hour conversation with rufus literally yesterday about <laughs> i'll tell you what i was telling yeah all right that's, that's funny that's funny yeah well my no, yeah, my, so... my, 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 my point though is is that is that is what, what, what is that what you were describing is is my is my kind of like gambling nobel prize like the person that could come up with the 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 perfect way to marry both disciplines as far as hedging goes like you Forget league. Let's take the easier ones like tennis and MMA, right? Yeah. Where you have one guy placing against another it's one guy. match playing. Nothing well, else is time. happening, right? There's no team dynamic, and and there's yeah. and there's nobody else fighting at the same time that you have to worry about. It's just one fight, and you know that if you beat that guy and you get X amount of points, you win X amount of money, right? Oh, you you absolutely should. Like th uh, this is like uh, this is definitely solvable. Like yeah. there's this is definitely solvable. I think the only the only real question you would ever run into with something like this is like, you know, how much liquidity you can get down. Well, right? not like if, well. if you're if you're if you're like playing to win a million dollars, right? If well, you're, if, like, are there even millie makers for tennis in your MMA? No, I don't even know. No, but 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 the problem is is that those sports are easy. But what 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 if you had to analyze your equity in an NFL slate on a Sunday 
at 325 <laughs> p.m. Well, well, excuse me, Saberson and all these these sites now claim they can do it. They claim that they can that they can assess what a lineup's expected value is at any one point. So if they can do it, or at least they can come close to doing it, if you could tell me this lineup rates to make X amount of money, you know, if, if you there was a hedge spot, like either bet the under on a, on a all these props, all these live betting you could do. Yeah, there's, there's, there's got to be something. You're right. That could that could that could that could optimize. You know, hey, I want to take thirty percent of my money off the table. Given now, here we go. Given all the different betting outlets that are out out there, all the different odds that are out there. How much you rate to win over here? How much exactly should you bet on which exact site to 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 get this amount of expected EV? And, and yeah. you know, it's uh. That's the holy grail, isn't it? Like it that's, is. that's, it, that's it is. the gambling like, Nobel Prize, right? Like, like the, the 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 difficult, like really the only difficult part with that is again like liquidity, because like a lot of times it's like any if you know anybody that does like heavy duty like real real life sports betting, like for a lot of money, like someone's making a living on it. the The difficulty in that industry becomes not not can you beat the market it becomes getting down getting money down yeah Absolutely. yeah like and and you end up having to do like you know you have to develop software to like multi-tap a bunch of phones in or you yeah. have to do like um well you know, i'll tell you what's something cool though spoofing authenticators and stuff no, like but that Vince, i'll tell you something cool so if i have like let's just this is kind of an unexpected benefit so if i have uh, a tennis lineup for example that mm -hmm. that is in good shape in dfs and I need Borg to beat Connors, whatever. And 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 I wanted to make a bet on Connors to hedge myself, and I knew how much I wanted to bet. I would go to say DraftKings or one of these sites and bet some some random bet on Connors. That's not going to be flagged as like sharp action. You know what no, I mean? it's not. That's that's I, the plus side to this. Yeah, because exactly. like it's you're not you're not showing a pattern of anything. That's because right, like exactly. really what gets you shut down is like showing that you have a pulse. Like right, that's that's right. really what what gets you right. shut down a lot of these places and. I mean, really, if you have access, like if you're if you're working offshore, a lot of those places will like you know, look at like Pinnacle or a couple other places. Like they will take a bet. You know, Pinnacle or Bookmaker will take a five digit bet on something, no problem. They have no beef with that. So like for something, I mean, really, depending on how much money you have in play on a certain slate for something, like I don't know what's even possible to get in play on like a tennis slate for DFS anymore. Like what's like what's the most you could even get into a into you know, a slate? Like 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 fifteen hundred probably in, in in the flagship, and there's like a two twenty two or something like that. Okay, so that's that's actually well, that's within limits where it's like oh, like if you can create, yeah. And then so this is another interesting philosophical angle for this. Do you now start building with that in mind? I don't right. think you do, but like that's a whole different right. thing do, too. Do, like, do, you, do you do you do you? Um, slants everything towards later, later, later fights. For example, in MMA, yeah, that's you an know? interesting thing to think about. Like, I, I mean, I don't know if it would ultimately change anything. Like, you'd have to do some back testing and research and figure out like if that's a thing or not. But that's kind of just cool to think about. It's like, no, I want to build a thing that's going to give me a chance at good equity and just a lock, like a hedge, a guaranteed profit on something, yeah. right? Like, it's interesting to think about all that. I, I, I'm with you. Like, I do think that's like the holy grail. It's just going to take someone that's got a lot more coding expertise that's than, that's that right. than I have. That's right. but it's um, a cool, it's a very cool idea. Uh, and, and I anything, think that's, that might be the future. Yeah. Like, well, you know what? I mean, this is what I say about all the SIM products that are out there right now. You know, people are worried that the SIMs are, you know, these SIM products are like kind of like ruining everything. And the way I look at it is different. I said, you know, listen, three years from now, everything that we see today is going to be looked at and going to be laughed at. You know, yep. it's going to, we're going to look back three years from now and say, oh my God, this sucks. So why don't you just presume it sucks now? Because it, it does. You just don't know how. <laughs> it's, it's, well, I, <laughs> here's another, th here's another thing. If you've ever studied, I mean, I, I know you say you run a hedge fund, right? Or you, you manage a portfolio manager. Mm -hmm. Um, Like there's a whole, it's the whole, it's the whole concept of like any kind of, uh, any kind of environment being like, you know, incestuous i guess is like the best word like it eats itself alive kind of idea where like if everyone starts using this then at what point is it like swings the other way where it's like oh no i'm just gonna like single entry stuff now like that's right, right. like maybe like maybe that's the answer or maybe it's like okay now i know what all the sim people are gonna do if i know that and that's where the ownership's gonna be there's leverage to be had there so like there's always it's it's always like an arms race one way yeah. or the other with yeah. this kind of stuff like it's never you know it's a little different in a game that's more um what do you call it that's that's more binary like you know like chess could be solved but 
the, you know, the chess supercomputers or whatever, or go supercomputers or, um, you know, solvers in poker, for instance. Right. But poker is maybe not the best example for this, but kind of right. Where it's, it's something that was very, um, it's, it, it can be solved. Right. There's always some variance to be had with it, but, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like there's, what, there's what, a, what, like... what you're looking at here on my screen right now is the first solver I created back in 2006. Okay. Wow. This, and now this, like all this stuff and it, it, this is stuff that I created literally like on, in my, on my, the back of my, my then son's, my, my son's, he was a baby then his coloring book with a crayon. I did all the algebra, like on how this stuff worked. And I created this in 2006. And, and back then, like this stuff didn't exist, you know? And, yeah. and well, the reason I bring it up is, is, you know, 15 years later or whatever it is, probably this live. 80% 80 of this is, is trivial. 20% of it turned out to be flawed, you know, whatever. Uh, but, but back then this was like, don't show anybody this, you know, like, like, yeah, this it was is the gonna, secret this is going to kill the game. You know what I mean? Like, God forbid somebody, somebody knows, you know, like, yeah, it's an Oppenheimer situation. Yeah. Where it's like, oh and man, do we this, really want this out there? <laughs> this was the very first chip equity and ICM equity calculator based on inefficient chip models. I have this code in the back of that. So, um, wow. uh, <laughs> that's a throwback, man. Crazy. Right. Um, all right, I'm, we're gonna get going. Uh, if you guys wanna, listen, you can follow uh, you can follow uh, Gelati uh, Vince on on Twitter at where are it's you? Gelati LOL on Twitter. Uh, the Patreon is Gelati LOL, and the League of Legends betting podcast is available on all betting platforms or on all major podcast platforms. All right, man, you are the man. You keep up the great work, and uh, I'll speak to you soon. Eric, thanks for having me, man. It was a good time. All right, dude. I'll talk to you later. Yeah. Thanks for having me, man. That was nice. No yeah. I, so it's funny story. So you, I, I didn't know you, you were a PM. So I, I traded for a living for like a couple of years. I wasn't.